Psyche Cinema presents WTC MIT Modeling, Instruction, and Testing. What I'd like to do is come up with our own model so that we can start thinking about this on our own to see if we can become comfortable with the mechanism of collapse. Uh, so if you're ready, let's, let's go ahead to slide 2-1. Uh, very briefly, what is a model? This concept of a model keeps coming up in scientific discussions. And again, a model is a simplification. What's important about a model is two things. First of all, it gives us a way to repeat the problem. It's, it's what we call a reductionist approach, where we break off a part of the problem that we think is important and we focus on it. The other thing that's important is that the model, in order to be any good, has to behave the same way as the real system. So it should have more or less the same physical mechanisms and it should scale properly. And this is one of the things that confuses a lot of the people in the truth movement. Now let's go to 2-5. Um, we're going to make our own model and our model is also going to be very, very simple. We're going to leave out a lot of important things, but the difference between our model and those models is we are going to go through the math and we are going to make sure that everything works out. So in our model, we're just going to assume we have a bunch of different floors that have a given mass and are spaced by a, a given distance. We assume that the strength required to break through the columns and down to the next floor is, is some fixed quantity. And this, uh, this quantity is equal to the yield strength times the displacement of the steel before it breaks. Uh, we need to keep track of the number of floors we're talking about. We need to keep track of gravity, because in our model, gravity is the only thing that's, that's providing energy for this thing to collapse. And there's a long list of things we're leaving out. So I'm going to diagram this model. And if you don't diagram the model, you, you really can't explain it to other people. This is good practice. Um, our model has three steps. The first step is you've got some large object that starts with some velocity and it falls some distance and it accelerates according to gravity. So what we can do is work out the equation for energy of this object as it falls. That's that one equation there. I start out with some kinetic energy, I add a gravitational uh, a contribution, and I wind up with the new velocity, the, the new kinetic energy. So th that's the first equation in my model. Uh, in 2-7 we have the second step of the model. This object now hits the next floor. Now when this happens, we have what we call an inelastic collision. We assume these two are going to stick together. And because it's an inelastic collision, we can't use a conservation of energy argument. There's a lot of ways energy could change in this collision. It makes noise, it fractures things, it creates heat. So we, don't, we can't keep track of the energy easily. But the quantity we can keep track of easily is momentum. Momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So this is the, the column failure in our model. We've, the, the, the descending mass has fallen, it's hit a floor, it's picked it up, swept it along, and now it's going to do some damage to the supports. Before we define the energy to break those supports, and there's a lot of ways you could describe breaking things. This is just one way to do it. Again, we do conservation of energy. We have kinetic energy, subtract the amount of energy to break the columns, and that gives you the new kinetic energy of the mass. That's it. That's our model, those three equations. That was Ryan Mackey, the great NASA scientist. He didn't give us a model, he gave us a concept of a model. But there is an obvious problem with his concept if it is supposed to be similar to the World Trade Center. His model has multiple levels below the impact point, but he has a solid block falling on those layers. That is not how the World Trade Center was constructed. That block cannot be crushed, but his lower portion can. That clip was edited from Mackey's third hardfire program about the physics of 9-11. This real physical model is somewhat similar to his in that it has flat masses separated by supports. But the construction of the falling mass is the same as that of the impacted structure below. How does this affect the result? Mackey didn't actually build a real model and do the test. As you can see, in the real world, the falling mass is brought to a complete stop. Paper loop number one remains intact because it only had to resist the inertia of a single washer. Paper loop number two is crushed to half of its original height. 
Loops 3 through 7 were completely flattened. Loops 8, 9, and 10 were severely damaged, but number 11 is perfectly intact. Loop number 12 is the first double loop and stronger than 11, so all of the loops below are undamaged. This model consists of 33 washers, 2 inches in diameter, separated by loops of paper. The washers average 1.7 ounces, with about 1.4 ounces at the top to 2.1 at the bottom. These paper loops are 9 16 inches tall. Numbers 1 through 11 were single loops. The next 17 below that were double loops, and the bottom 5 are triple loops. There are at least two flaws with Mackey's conceptual model. One is obvious from the drawing, and the other is something he says, that the strength required to break through the columns is some fixed quantity. But every level down, the columns must support more weight. So if the strength is always the same, then the columns near the top are too strong. Otherwise, the lower columns are stronger and therefore more difficult to break. The obvious flaw in Mackey's drawing is the solid block he has falling on the stack. The World Trade Center above the impact point had the same structure as the portion below. The top was as crushable as the bottom. So here we have a second drop. One, two, and three were replaced. But the damaged loops at the bottom were left out. So we're starting with number 11 and down. Second drop on the same loops, still the structure refuses to completely collapse. But one peculiar thing did occur. Double loops near the bottom were crushed. These were the double loops with the maximum amount of stress, but the ones above remained intact. As you can see, loop 11 was crushed and number 1 received significant damage. So here are all the crushed loops from the second drop. 1, 2, and 3, 11, 12, 13 took damage, and 27 and 28 were crushed. Those were the bottom double loops, but all the rest were intact. The five triple loops at the bottom all remained intact. We will see if they are crushable like the rest. They can be crushed, but it takes a significant amount of force to do it. Dropping the top 12 to 10 percent of the mass on the structure could not destroy it. So this is a result of a test similar to described by Mackey. And as you can see, that is just three loops of paper. So now we get to see what MIT showed us on television back in 2002. simple wooden model. Um, we have here two uh, frame structures, basically these are the columns and these are three floors and I'm uh, certain that we had fires and these fires uh, caused the, this floor basically to fail and drop onto the floors below, underneath. So once this floor was gone we had a situation similar to this one here. This changes dramatically the way in which the loads and the building are carried. Let me illustrate this by adding uh, weights here to this structure. And uh, this load again that I just added is transmitted through these columns all the way to the table. The important thing to understand is this floor does not carry any of this load. This, the only function of this floor 
is to connect the columns together, to tighten the columns together and prevent them from buckling. The model on the left is able to take a very large amount of weight, but the one with the missing floor is only able to support a quarter of that amount before its columns twist and buckle and it collapses. The World Trade Center did not have just four columns in the corners. It did not have columns in the corners. It had 59 columns on each side. But those columns were connected by spandrels and the outer edge of the floor was connected to the spandrels. So even if the floor fell, the spandrels would remain. So MIT's silly model is fundamentally incorrect. 9-11 has gone beyond ad nauseum and will continue ad infinitum as long as engineering schools talk nonsense.